we do another poll just to see how many of you have considered a career in radiology, please? Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. 58%. So a decent Great. number already interested in radiology. Um, and I'm sure Sahel is going to going to increase that a little bit. Yep, absolutely. So our next speaker, he has many accolades, including a neonatal fellowship from Leicester. He's got a master's in paediatrics um, from Cambridge, and he's currently a second year radiology trainee in the North Midlands. Uh, Dr. Suhail Khan, it's a privilege to have him here with us to give you all an insight about how to get into radiology. And not only that, what to expect once you are in a radiology specialty. So Suhail, are you there? Yes, yeah. there we are. I think the webcam is on. We've got your slides. Oh, brilliant, okay. Hi guys, uh, sorry for that. Um, I'm Sahil. Um, uh, so I'll be doing a talk on, on radiology, uh, focusing more or less <clears throat> into how to get into radiology and what you need to do. Um, so a brief, uh, I'll, I'll split my talk into three parts. Um, I'll talk briefly about my background very quickly, uh, but the, more, the, the focus of course will be on how you can do it and how you can um, crack into the system over here. Uh, to make it as a radiology training and come out of it. Um, and lastly, that will be followed by uh, questions. Um, so my story, um, so as I, I trained to be, I did my university um, in India, uh, my medical training. Um, and during my foundation year, or as, in, as it's called, called internship over there, um, I had this experience, personal experience where one of my clothes the latest child was uh, in the uh, neonatal ICU and had a congenital malformation uh, called vein of gallon malformation. Um, and the expertise needed to treat that condition was a pediatric intervention radiologist, which were not there in the whole of South India at that point of time. Um, it was kind of, kind of like a traumatic experience for me because we knew what the condition was, but we didn't, didn't have any expertise, expertise doctor to treat that condition in the whole of South India and the child sadly passed away. So that left a really deep mark uh, in my heart. And um, I talked to a few people around and I didn't even know pediatric intervention radiology was a um, career option at that point of time. Um, and once I talked to people, uh, I decided that I either need to do pediatrics or radiology. And in the end, I wanted to become a pediatric radiologist. But before that, I wanted to have a good background in pediatrics and neonatology. So I did my master's in pediatrics. I finished my MRCPCH in Cambridge and did a two year neonatal fellowship in Leicester. And now I've ended up in uh, radiology training as I aim for hoping to be a pediatric radiologist. But my talk would be uh, specifically upon how to be a radiologist um, uh, and how to get into it. So, yeah, that was about me. And now we we'll focus upon how you can do it and how the pathway is. Um, so talking about radiology specifically, the training scheme um, is divided into five years. Uh, the, the different routes of getting into radiology, and we'll, talk, we'll touch upon that a little later. But first, I want to run you through to how the training program works, and that will make the understanding of how you can get in a little easier. So if you're fresh from internship or from foundation years, you start off right over here, uh, and then you work your way through from year one to year five. The first three years are called the foundation years or the core years, where you finish your FRCR exams and train to be a general radiologist. Uh, once your exams are out of way, the last two years are uh, dedicated to training into your subspecialty. For example, if you want to be a uh, uh, a GI radiologist or a neuroradiologist, that subspecialty training takes place in the last two years. Um, the only, only uh, exception to this is intervention radiology. Uh, if you want to become an intervention radiologist, the training is extended for one more year, and the last three years are spent uh, to be a 
intervention radiologist. So any other radiology program, uh, the training program would be from year one to year five. But if you want to be intervention radiologist, that would be six years in total. So now, once you finish your training, depending on how you got in, there are three different outcomes. Uh, you can either come out having a CCT, that's called Certificate of Completion of Training, or you can come out having a CESA CP route, that's called a Certificate of Eligibility for Specialist Registration Combined Program, or you can come out having Certificate of Eligibility for Specialist Registration, that's CESA route. If you start right from the foundation years and do all your five years training in UK, you come out having a CCT, right? Suppose you have done a bit of radiology training outside, uh, outside of UK um, and then want to join in, but haven't completed all the five years in UK, in UK, but say have done two years in UK or three years in UK, you end up with a CESA CP uh, certification. Now there's a catch to this. Uh, CESA CP certification is quite, uh, or can be quite common in, with other, other specialties, but with radiology, it's really hard to get into radiology midway. Um, it's not a very popular route uh, for the details of which I cannot discuss over here for time because of time restrictions. But this this uh, route is more or less non-existent in radiology. The other route is called the Caesar route. Um, so you can take up this route if you've completed all of your radiology training outside, but now you want to become a consultant radiologist in UK. You can choose the Caesar route. This usually involves just a lot of uh, documentation verification that's required. And then you can become a certified UK consultant in work to, to be eligible to practice in UK without having done any training in UK per se, right? But today the talk will focus upon CCT. Um, and if anyone has any other questions regarding other routes, uh, please get in touch and I'll, I'll, I'll try to help out. So let's start from the basics of basics. So um, I'm targeting the talk towards uh, people who are fresh, fresh from internship or just finishing the foundation years. Before you even apply to radiology, um, you need to be fully GMC registered. Um, so that usually means you need, uh, for the purposes of uh, being an IMG, that would mean you'd be finishing your PLAB exams or PLAB MLE whenever you finish it. Um, and then you also need uh, 24 months of experience uh, of, that is, you need to have 24 months of internship or foundation year practice. Um, and you need, you do not need to have any radiology, prior radiology experience at all uh, before applying to radiology. Uh, this is important because if you have worked abroad, say suppose you have 18 months or more of experience in radiology before applying to ST1, you would be deemed Ill, Ill eligible, right? So having prior experience in radiology for the purpose of CCT is actually a negative thing. Um, but if you have experiences in other specialties, such as pediatrics or surgery or any other uh, uh, training program, that would be a positive factor. But having radiology experience more than 18 months would be counted as a negative factor, right? Um, and of course, uh, you might have heard of something called the CREST form already. That stands for Certificate of Readiness to Enter Specialty Training. Uh, you need th this to be signed off before you can apply to radiology, right? So these are just the basic things which most of you would be aware of. And these are common to other uh, specialty training programs, being GMC registered, um, having a CREST form ready, um, and having about 24 months of foundation years competencies, right? So moving on to radiology per se, uh, and to the meat of the matter, this is how your journey would more or less look like. So you're GMC registered, you have your CREST form signed, and now you apply for radiology. The applications usually open in the month of November every year. And uh, we'll talk about each of these steps in detail. Um, so after you apply for radiology, the MSRA exam is usually in January, uh, mid to end of January. Um, followed, uh, that is followed by the interview and the portfolio uh, in interview station. That's in um, February. Uh, and the results come out in March. 
uh, if you have been successful uh, in the geology application, the training programs usually start between uh, uh, August to September. So this is how your journey would look like. We'll be focusing more upon these highlighted areas now. So the radiology application is very straightforward. Uh, they're not looking for anything, uh, uh, any evidence of your CV or portfolio per se. Um, what they're looking for is, are you eligible to apply for radiology? And that's about it. Uh, so you just enter your details. You need to have a, uh, you need to have a GM, GMC registered, and uh, you need to have a crest form ready. You just enter your other details. Uh, that is more or less to see whether you are uh, able to stay in UK. Do you have a valid visa? Uh, and uh, do you have any criminal background? Those kind of things. Uh, it's nothing to do with radiology per se. They just want to see if you are eligible to be a doctor in UK. And that's about it. The radiology application process is very straightforward. And should, you shouldn't have any problems with it. So once you have successfully applied to radiology, you would be invited to sit the uh, MSRA exam, right? Um, I'm sure people have already touched upon this, uh, but I'll talk a little detail about this now because it is kind of important for radiology. Now, because the competition ratio of radiology is quite high, um, the competition ratio is about one is to four to one is to five uh, per, uh, per, per placement for radiology. So to cut down on how many people they interview, they've recently introduced MSRA exam into radiology. This was previously used for GP trainees, but now also rolled out for radiology. Now, this exam consists of two uh, sections broadly. One is called the situational judgment test, and the other is your um, clinical application test. Uh, the details of the exam per se uh, is beyond the talk of this session, but what is important to know is that the only only the first six 500 to 600 candidates, uh, the top 500 to 600 candidates scoring an MSRA are invited for the interview, right? So typically you have about 1,200 to 1,800 applicants for radiology, um, but only the first 600 are called to the interview, right? So on most, about half of the people are just screened off after the MSRA exam itself. So it's critical to do very well in the MSRA exam. Not only is it important for you to do well to be called for the interview, but even for the final rank, about 30% of the uh, uh, weightage for your end rank is given to the MSRA score. So again, you, I can't highlight how important this is, not only for you being screened for the interview, but also to have a competitive rank to get a, a placement in, a, in the geography you want in UK, right? So, Regarding MSRA exams, there are, uh, for uh, to to do well in them, there are lots of resources, uh, including a resource by Dr. Arora himself. Uh, but there are lots of resources out there, and um, it's critical to do extremely well in this, right? So that was about the MSRA exam. Now let's see. Let's say that you have cracked the MSRA. You've been called for the interview. Um, now what? Now, how do you crack the interview itself, right? So yeah, I forgot to mention uh, this year because of the COVID scenario uh, with MSRA, the people who score, who come in the top 55 placements are automatically given slots, uh, placements in radiology. So you don't, you won't even be called to interview. So top 55 people in today's, in, in, in the uh, uh, placement this year are directly called, are directly placed in, in the geography they want without even having the interview, right? So if so, coming back to the interview itself, the uh, interview is divided into various stations. You have uh, first the the interview pattern changes year to year, but it's more or less divided into three sessions. The first section is uh, called something called the self assessment section. So here you'll be given a sheet of paper that's divided into various modalities, um, such as uh, audits publications, uh, commitment, uh, publications, trial research, teaching, et cetera. So you have different modules given and they'll, they'll let you know how much each module counts for depending on what you have done. For example, if you have uh, an audit done that has been locally presented, say that gives you a score of two, 
but if it has been nationally presented or internationally presented, that might give you a score of four, right? So this, uh, this section, they're judging how you self-assess yourself. So you're given a piece of paper and you self-assess yourself against each module they've asked, right? Then you move on to the next section where there are usually two radiology consultants uh, sitting. One will be questioning you and the other will be marking you, right? So in this session, they try to call, they, they try and test you how much you already know about how the radiology scheme runs. They're not particularly asking about knowledge about radiology is a subject per se, not the academia side of things, but how much you know about the training program. For example, you might be asked things like, how many years is the radiology program? How many courses have you been through? Um, have you attended any interview courses? Have you um, been to any, any uh, courses that uh, talk about chest x-rays or things like that? So trying to check how much you have dedicated your prior learning to become a radiologist. Right. Um, this is this, this this section of the interview is fairly easy to easy to crack. Um, again, if anyone's interested, please get in touch. And the very specific things you can do to score really high in this section of the uh, interview. So once this session is done, the last session is usually the portfolio session, and this is where majority of your time preparing to get into radiology goes into. Right. So the portfolio station is divided. Uh, they're checking different modules of your uh, CV, right? Um, they can, let's talk through what, each one of them uh, one by one. So first of all, they might ask you to talk, talk, talk through your CV itself. Here, they're not looking at how, how brilliant your CV is per se, but they're trying to look at your communication skills and how organized you are. You get only about five to 10 minutes for the interview and communication Communicating the whole of your CV in an, in an effective manner takes skill, and that's what they're looking for, right? So you'll have to be very organized to try and talk through to your CV. Followed by that, they ask you, uh, they, they see if you have any prizes or distinctions. These could be things like um, anything from your uh, medical years where maybe you scored really high in a particular subject and awarded a prize for that, or any other prizes for, uh, or distinctions. Next, we come on to postgraduate degrees. Now, this is a tricky, tricky session because lots of doctors coming into radiology now are fresh from foundation years, uh, and they wouldn't necessarily have time to do any postgraduate degrees. But if you've done anything like, say, MRCP1 or 2 or MRCPCH, which can be done in foundation years, that counts for a lot. But there are lots of people who also have a lot of experience in different specialties who join in radiology later. It's not uncommon for very senior grade registrars of surgical background or pediatrics or medical background to come into radiology, right? So you might think that a person coming straight from foundation years has no chance as compared to someone who's coming from uh, a surgical background with extensive CV or a, or a medical background with extensive CV, but that's not true. The, 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 the um, interview panelists are aware that you can only do so much in, in, in the time you've had. So if you're fresh from foundation years, right, they will keep that in mind and judge how much you have done or how much you've committed to radiology in that point, uh, in, in, that, in, the, in your journey so far, right? But if you have been a surgical trainee for a long time, they expect you to have a lot more in your CV, right? So don't be daunted by the fact that when you apply for radiology fresh from your foundation years, there are lots of senior people out there who are applying as well, um, because you have a very good chance despite the seniority to crack into radiology, right? Uh, then they check your presentations, publications, uh, and with each of these modalities, you are given a different score. For example, if you have a publication in a PubMed journal, if you have a case presentation, if you have a case report presented, uh, published that would count for lesser but if you have a research research article uh, published in a pubmed cited article in a Pub pubmed cited journal sorry uh, that will count for much more and similar for each of these modules right so get cracking the radiology interview in a sense is cracking the portfolio station and presenting it well 
And you have to do this in a very smart manner. For example, um, if you, uh, let's come to say, uh, uh, postgraduate degrees, right? If you, if you want a postgraduate degree done, um, that will minimum, say if you want the MRCP done, that will usually take you two or three years to do, but that will just give you about four points. But if you do a really good audit, which can be completed in a week or two, that will still give you about four points, right? So it's not about scoring maximum in every in each of these uh, modules, but it's about how you can do the maximum in the time you have to score the maximum score overall. So you have to be really smart about it uh, and choose things that you think can be done quickly. So the portfolio station in a sense is a mind game. It's more of strategy rather than doing any donkey work. You have to be really smart about it and people crack it uh, quite well and well planned about it. But if you just go there aimlessly, you'll be left nowhere in the competition, right? One thing I would like to uh, stress upon is something called the taster week. Um, as IMGs, at least I was not aware of anything called the taster week. Um, it's something that's commonly done in UK. A taster week is essentially a week where you shadow consultants or registrars in the radiology department for about five to seven days um, and get a feel of how the department works. In radiology in particular, for the portfolio station, the taster week is very, very important. I haven't seen anybody who comes into taster, comes to the interview station who doesn't have a taster week done. And if you don't have this done, it reflects really poorly. And this is something that can be easily done. You just have to send emails around um, to respective secretaries to try and organize a week uh, in radiology, right? So the key to getting into radiology uh, boils down to two main things now, is the MSRA score and the portfolio station for which you have to work in a strategic manner. Um, how you score high in overall the portfolio station would depend on your background. And again, I'm happy to be contacted if anyone is really interested to uh, get into radiology in UK uh, and how to, because the portfolio station would depend on your individual circumstances and we can try and tailor make it to give you the best chances forward, right? But this is how you're typically tested in the portfolio station. These are the modules that they're looking into. <laughs> so once you, so, uh, suppose you've gotten into radiology and I hope you do, uh, once you get into it, there's lots of studying and uh, it can be a little overwhelming upon, uh, based upon the volume of knowledge that's actually needed. People kind of underestimate it. The other thing that people don't really realize, especially if you're coming from a senior background, is in the first two years of radiology, uh, you are considered uh, more or less baby radiologists and can't do anything independently because every report of yours has to be double checked or checked by, by a consultant. So once you get into radiology, the world is really different to other clinical specialties. Um, um, uh, a specialty that no, no day is really unexciting. Every day you find something or the other that, that really um, makes, makes the day worth it. Um, yeah, I think that's the end of my talk. Uh, with any questions you would like to ask, um, I think please go ahead. Fantastic. That was really, really helpful, actually, Sahel. Thank you. We lost a little bit at the end there, and there are a couple of questions that have been coming through from people. So if you don't mind, we can send those across to you, Sahel, just because, again, they're quite specific. Um, but there's one general one that's come in twice. Could you just quickly tell us about an average week, Sahel, for you at the moment in radiology? And one of the questions was... Uh, yes. um, and one of the questions was, how, how do you feel about AI taking over radiology in the future? Okay, um, so just, just from the order of the question, so a typical radiology week, it depends on which year of training you are. Um, let's start from, uh, let's talk about a, a typical ST1 or the first year of training in radiology in UK. So in the first year, the expectation is for you to clear your part one exam, that's physics and anatomy. So um, the first six months, you hardly report anything, depending on which, which, um, the, uh, which uh, training scheme you're into, the, uh, the scheme of things can vary a bit, but essentially 
what you do in the first six months is just preparing for physics and anatomy. And the training program starts in uh, August, September, and uh, the exam is in, usually in, in March or so. So the first six months is just preparation for your physics and anatomy exam, a little bit of reporting. The next six months goes on to uh, goes goes on for on call. So you are trying to prepare for acute scans, um, and typically by ST uh, two onwards, you are being prepped for on calls. So in ST one, again this varies from scheme to scheme, but in ST one, at least the first six months you won't have on calls at all. More or less, there's no service provision. You spend your time in preparation for the exam. The next six months, depending on the um, training scheme, you might have on calls, uh, but um, some of them do and some of them don't. SG2 onwards, you will have on calls. But having said that, radiology has one of the best work-life balances uh, in uh, considering all specialties. Uh, think about it, you don't have any handovers per se. Uh, you don't have anything to give over at five o'clock. There's nothing to delay you. So your, your time starts straight at nine and ends straight at five. Um, the work-life balance is absolutely amazing. Um, from ST2 to ST3 onwards, um, the training scheme is divided. Um, so the training scheme is different in each, uh, depending on which region you train into. For example, in my training scheme, you have three months blocks and every three months you rotate in different specialties. For example, first three months might be uh, you're doing scans just related to GI. The next three months, you're doing scans related to neuro. The next three months after that would be chest. So typically, you'll have three months rotations uh, every year. Um, and by ST3, uh, the aim is that you've been, you've been rotated in all sub specialities. Um, so that's how the training scheme and typical work kind of works. Um, I hope I answered that question. Yeah, but uh, Sorry, what was the next question? Yeah. It's just a very quick one, really, about thoughts of AI and radiology. That's one of the interview questions, actually. Um, oh, wow. So there's no doubt AI is coming into radiology in a very big way. Um, but different people have different opinions of it. My opinion of it and most of my consultants is that AI is not here to replace radiologists, at least for the next 20 or 25 years. The sheer volume of work going up in radiology is uh, I mean, the, the number of trainees in the world cannot keep up with the amount of work that is there uh, in radiology. So AI is essentially helping us get more scans done uh, in, in, a, in a more efficient and quicker manner. But uh, at least for the next 20, 25 years, AI completely taking over the radiologist's role is, is, is unlikely. And also think about it um, from a medical legal point of view, say, I don't know, a company says, I can report all neuro scans uh, just through AI and they miss something, right? Uh, the software misses a bleed or something. They're going to sue the whole company and the, the company wouldn't like that. They would rather have a radiologist's name over there so that they can sue the individual doctor. So uh, even, even from, a, from, a, from, a, from a money perspective, because everything kind of boils down to that when it comes down to AI, uh, when it comes to uh, mass um, uh, use of it, that a company wouldn't want to put their bets completely on AI. Uh, they would want someone else to double check the report, uh, a human to double check the report always. Uh, so at least in the next 25, 20, 25 years, AI is here just to supplement or to uh, boost efficiency yeah, very, very good, huh? uh, but not to replace technologists. And there's another thing. Yeah, just, just another aspect, running a little out of time. Uh, there is also a lot of radiology that involves intervention. Every subspecialty involves intervention, some kind of intervention or the other. And that currently is not even in the works uh, for AI to take over. So yeah, short of it is AI is not here to take a radiologist's job. Very good, that was a great answer. There's, there's um, so loads and loads of questions. It looks like everybody was waiting around for the radiology talk. Um, so there's a lot of questions I've just sent your way. Uh -huh. um, so if you don't mind just giving okay. some answers to those, that would be really helpful. But thank you so much, Nell. That was super, super useful. And no I know problem. You, Thanks for um, having me. No, and I know you're quite heavily involved in admining one of the radiology groups on Facebook. So if anyone's interested in 
radiology, then please do find. Is it the radiology for IMG's Facebook group to help? Sorry, the, the the voice is breaking. Say that again. Is it radiology for IMGs, the Facebook group that you that you admin? Yes, uh, it's the UKNG group, um, and also I'm uh, you can yeah, I'm happy to be contacted personally on Messenger as well. Uh, so whatever works for you, um, you can contact me. Um, you should be able to find my uh, Facebook ID. You can just type in Suhail Ahmed Khan, um, and you should, if you see the similar photo, I should be there. Uh, I prefer Fantastic. to be contacted on Messenger. I don't check my Facebook as often as I, as I should, uh, but personal messages I do look into. That's brilliant. Thank you. I please do take that offer up because Sahel is a super helpful um, person who's helped a lot of people through a lot of um, queries, both for radiology and for IMGs uh, in general.